In this video, we're going to discuss the Web Developer Toolbar. The Web Developer Toolbar is actually right here up on top. And if you remember from the first video, I actually set a toggle so I can turn it on and off right here. As you can see, we have all kinds of different menus in here. But what do they all do? Well, starting at the left, you can see that this one's actually quite useful right away. You can disable your cache, disable your cookies, and disable anything you need to. If you go to a rogue website you need to get in there, you can disable your JavaScript right here without having to go into options. And disabling cache and cookies, that can also come in handy. The CSS one, we're actually going to talk about in the next video. Forms, this is quite useful for seeing form information and getting some other information about a form perhaps not some details. You can also convert the post to gets and gets the post and you know clear the radio buttons. The image one is actually something with a more tangible purpose. If we had a bunch of pictures on here we could actually see a little box up in the corner telling the dimensions of the file size or the path of those images. So if you need to see how big a file size is or see the dimensions of that or where they are you can do so right here. You can also find broken images and do a bunch of other stuff here as well. Information. This is one that you're probably going to be using the most, especially this one here. You can actually see the IDs of some of the elements on your page. And later on in this video, we're going to be using that a little bit more. One other thing that you might use a lot is the display topographic information. This allows you to see what layers are on top of what other layers and see the dimensions of the layers because naturally they're invisible but this will allow us to see it. So if you have some sort of object pushing over some other object and it's not really showing, you can actually see it here. You can also see information on cookies, see the JavaScript, and see a few other things in here as well. In miscellaneous, you have a lot of stuff you could use just as a user. You have an easy way to clear your cache or your cookies right here. I actually give this toolbar to users and show them just this part right here so they can clear the cache really easily. That one's another really nice one. We can actually outline illegal elements or other types of elements in our page. So if we had some sort of font tag in here, we can actually see it. You can also see we can check for block level elements. An example of a block element is the div. As you can see here, you can outline that. There's also a few other things in here if you want to outline a table to see if anybody's using an illegal table hack to do their layout. And you can also check out the cells and anything else, frames as well. And my favorite thing is actually right here, the outline custom element. We can actually outline certain custom things. Just outline these three, we could. We don't have any on here, but if we did, they'd be outlined. Resize is something everybody can use. Normally, I use a widescreen monitor, so I can't naturally test 10 by 7 resolution. But in here, I could actually set this, and my screen would actually set to that so I can test my page in that resolution. Here's 800 by 600. As you saw in the first video, I actually added this one custom. In tools, we have something very important. We have the validation for CSS, HTML, and various other things. If you're not validating your code, you're not doing it right. By running a validation on your page, you can ensure that it has no obvious problems from their syntax. Running validation on your page is rather akin to running a compiler on your code to check for errors. It's absolutely indispensable. And of course, here you can view your source. Over here we have our options. And over here we have this nice little blue thing. Clicking on it actually shows us information about the page, which is the same thing as right-clicking and going to view page info. But it's really the color of the button that's really important to us. If it's blue, we're in standards compliance mode. If it's not, we're in quirks mode. As you can see here, we're in standards compliant mode and it's blue. This means that the rendering of this page follows the standards rules. As an example of how this is important, Internet Explorer 5, for example, uses the Microsoft Box model. Firefox and other modern web browsers use the W3C Box model. Internet Explorer 6 actually can switch between both. And Internet Explorer 6 has two modes, quirks mode and almost standards mode. There is no standards mode in Internet Explorer, but depending on what mode you're in, it will actually render the page differently. And the mode's actually set by various things. One of those things is actually the stock type. Traditionally, we always thought this thing was useless, but this is very important. 
And to the right of this, we'd actually see other things, like the JavaScript console and a toggle to turn this on and off. Basically, disable it, make all the buttons gray. So, that's the gist of the bar. Now, to show what it does, let's just edit our code a little bit. We're going to put in a couple divs here. Let's just kind of nest them. Let's put fruit names. Now, if we save and we load, we don't see anything fancy. But if we look at the topographic information, we can actually see the different colors. This was, of course, nested in this. This was, of course, nested in this. So, the lighter the color here, the deeper your nest. <laughs> so, you can see right away where your objects are nesting. This comes in really handy when you get into other things with objects side by side. For example, if I were to give this an ID, and this is an ID. We were to add a CSS page. And if we were to go ahead and add something in here to access those, it's an ID selector. And, of course, link this to the page. We could change a few things here. Set this to be a float left. And change this to be a float left. Let's save. Let's reload. Now we look at the topographic information, we see that they're all crammed together here. Now if we were to go back, if we were to go in here and add a padding of 20 pixels and some back, we see that this is moved over. Now we can see how it's moved over and why it's moved over by this, in addition to the ID. So now you can see the orange is here and apple's here, and its padding is around apple. If we didn't have this information, it very well could be that something else had a margin set up. But we can see here that it's actually a padding on Apple. And you can use various other things in here as well. One of the things that I like to do, as I said earlier, is to use the custom outline. Let's outline all the divs. And you can change one of these to be a span. Let's make this a span. Go back. Now you can see we have a span inside of the div. This gives us a lot more information. Now, as I say, you can also search for old elements as well, things that are completely obsolete, and things we're not supposed to use anymore, like the font. Save, go back, reload. Now we have this thing, and we can actually look right here, and we can see all the illegal elements in our page. Or you can go ahead, if you know what illegal element you're looking for, go ahead and put it in here, and look for everything at once. And of course, this could work with the topographic information, which could also work with the IDs, and with anything else you see in here that might be useful. And that's basically the gist of the web developer toolbar.